you're listening to the Dynamic Women podcast. Each week, you'll be inspired by our global community of women. They'll share with you tools and stories to help you be dynamic in every area of life. He's your host, award-winning coach, and the CEO and founder of Dynamic Women, Diane Rolston. And welcome to the Dynamic Women Global Club. I'm here with Kaylee Auger. And, um, you know, I can go fully through her bio, which is quite extensive and wonderful. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this a little bit more interactive, I think. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of tidbit about her. Um, first of all, I met her at an event and I was like, wow, you're you're a cool person, and I would love to bring you to our community. Kaylee is the owner, visionary, and the business trainer. Now, what's your company's name? Kaylee? Hi, Studio. It's a salon in Kitsilano. On awesome. Fourth. Yeah. And you've been behind the chair for 25 plus years. I, I, that's correct. I was behind the chair for 25 years, but I'm no longer behind the chair. I'm mm-hmm running the salon, uh, my training company, and raising my kids. (laughs) Okay, you mentioned kids. How many? How old? Uh, Two kids, two girls, beautiful little girls. They are, uh, Zoe is five and Clay is seven. Oh. Yeah, lots of fun. Such cute names, too. (laughs) And you said you're no longer behind the chair, so why is that? What's your role? Uh, so I took off when I had Clea seven years ago, I stopped doing hair um, so I could take care of her. And what I noticed was when I wasn't working in the business, it allowed me time to work on the business. And my business actually started to grow more while I was on my mat leave working on the business. And so I kind of got a taste of that and decided not to go back um, to that working in the business. Yeah. Great question. So that makes me curious though, because if I had to only work on my business and not do the coaching and the speaking and all that, I wouldn't want to be in business anymore. So how is it, how how do you find it being the owner of a successful hair salon rather than being a hairstylist? Yeah, that's a great question. I had to really shift my identity. Um, I had such an amazing career as a hairstylist. I got to travel around the world teaching on platforms, um, training, and um, and had an amazing clientele. And I have to say, I do really miss that interaction with my clientele. Uh, but I had to, uh, when I bought the salon, I had so many hats to wear. And I knew something had to give. And my passion for hair started to... Um, you know, that role behind the chair started to diminish and I really got passionate about building my team. Um, So I still do have some roles in the salon, but they're more on the teaching and the training of the team. Um, I also realized that only I was only one person and I could only give great hair to so many people. And if I could duplicate myself, now we have 11 great stylists. Uh, you know, that's just a lot more great hair that we can offer. Um, So that was the way I kind of... um, my passion just took me in another direction uh, from where it was when I was behind the chair. Yeah. And this is really great. I think for everybody to be hearing that you can take your business to another level and your, yes, your role can change, but there's still, there's new challenges and new ways to be rewarded for what you're doing. Plus, like you said, the, your impact just ripples out and you can reach more people. Um, we're going to go into a little bit of, about, more about who Kaylee is because she does have a successful business and we want to know a little bit more, pick your brain a little bit. Um, with, and we don't even have to buy you a coffee. Which no, is, you don't. Oh, <laughs> well, you can no. if you want. We can meet again. <laughs> well, well, thank you for doing this. And you said you're, um, you are in Kitsilano, and just for those who aren't in the Vancouver area, um, where would you say that is in relation to downtown? downtown? Um, well, it's over a bridge, so hopefully no one's scared of crossing a bridge if they are in the downtown core. Uh, but Fourth Avenue is the area of town where you have a lot of runners and uh, people who like to eat vegetarian food and to be healthy and care about the environment. So that's the type of uh, clientele that we cater to. And we also uh, really, because I love entrepreneurship and I love empowering women, um, Mm -hmm. we really focus our business to cater to 
uh, in, to women in business and entrepreneurs. Wow. Uh, and some of the ways we do that is we have a work bar so that we notice that a lot of our clients would come during the day and they would be slouched over with their foils in their hair and they'd be trying to get work done on their computer. Um, so we put, built in a little workstation so that they could, while they're processing, work at their computer. Oh, like, blew my mind. <laughs> that is so clever. Thanks. Yeah, it's yeah. really, um, you know, and also just really being on time, I really pressure my stylists to honor their time commitment. I know how it feels as a busy entrepreneur to have an appointment and be in that waiting room for 15 minutes and thinking, do you know how much I could have got done in 15 minutes <laughs> if I knew? Um, so really, because we want that type of woman, um, I really you know, pressure them to keep their timing uh, on track and really honor people's time and resources. Yeah. And that's probably why clients keep coming back because yes. they trust that the time that they're there is valued. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's tell a little bit more about you. I love that in your bio, you, you're a tresses trustee. <laughs> Cause yeah, we do, we do trust people and you're saying you're a platform artist, a L'Oreal professional, you're a business coach and trainer. Um, and a, you have L'Oreal professional twice. So why don't you tell us what that is since you have it twice, it must be super important. Um, you're, well, so in my past, I was a L'Oreal educator as a hair educator. So since I was uh, 18 years old, I've been teaching people how to cut hair. Um, I had the opportunity, which was an opportunity of the lifetime to go to Thailand um, and work with an interpreter and teach people there how to do hair. Um, really amazing experiences. And when I transitioned out of doing hair behind the chair, I called L'Oreal up and I said, I no longer feel confident teaching because I'm not practicing. And so I said, I'm going to put all of my focus in on the business side of things. Um, so I'm going to step back from teaching. And they said, well, we're actually building a business department. So we'll just transfer you right over and you can be one of our business trainers. Um, so it was really great timing. Oh. And so I got on with, um, so L'Oreal Professional is the company that I represent when I go out and teach salon owners better ways to run their businesses. Okay. So you are a trainer of other hair salon owners. Yes. Helping them. And what would you say is the biggest problem that you see with, with them? Because I'm sure a lot of, a lot of the women listening and watching are feeling similar things. So what, what do you see? Well, um, I would say uh, if any of you have read the E-Myth, it talks about mm -hmm. how you get really good at your craft and you think the next step is opening a business and you don't really have any business foundation or business knowledge. And that is rampant in the hair industry. Um, most salon owners are not business people. They are hairdressers who were really good, had a big clientele. Somebody told them, hey, you have a big clientele, open a business. And so there's problems, you know, if you want problems, you can find them. There's um, financial literacy, how to read your PNL, your balance sheet, how to understand what that all means, how to run a budget to make sure that you're not overspending and saving for taxes. Um, there's team management leadership, um, you know, how to keep your team engaged so they don't just go across the street for a, a bigger commission, um, you know, identifying your missions, your vision, um, marketing challenges, keeping up with all the new platforms and social media, you know, there's, it goes on and on and on. So I do, um, with my training, I love to focus on the financial. I think it's a very good foundation. And a few other things. You have won a lot of awards, gold yes. stars. So I can, I can read them off or you can tell us just a little bit about more, but what they mean, because we don't understand what <laughs> one of his best beauty talent was or the Contessa Award or the Al Allied Beauty Association Award or the contributor to, and well, we understand being a contributor to Chatelaine. Hello Canada, Flair, Global TV, Breakfast Television, and more. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about these awards and the importance of them. Yeah, well, I started com competing at a really young age and again, got to travel um, and represent Canada on a Canadian team. And it started out with doing like really crazy blow dries. So you'd have 25 minutes to do this crazy blow dry and then they'd go around and judge it and they'd pick a winner. And uh, it was a real thrill. Um, you know, I was really young at the time. I started doing that, you know, early 20s. 
And from there, um, it progressed into, I got selected to be on a TV show and it was kind of like, so you think you can dance or something, you know, where they vote people off. And oh. um, it was actually like a, a web-based. Uh, okay, because I was going to say, like, what's it called? We could watch it. Yeah, you can Google it, Canada's Best Beauty Talent, and it's still on there. And so basically, they would give you a look and in inspiration. Coco Rocho was uh, one of the judges, and or she was the host, and then we had all these celebrity judges. And they'd give you an inspiration, a model, and you'd have a time limit to create a look. And then they would vote somebody off each episode. And so I managed to hang in there <laughs> till the bitter end and, wow. and win the title. Um, you completely won it. You weren't yeah. just won it. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So that, that was a lot of fun. And then that led to a lot of other opportunities. That's what led to the magazine opportunities um, that really helped grow my business. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I'm just, competitive. I, I swam competitive all my life. I did triathlon. Uh, it's just in my nature to be competitive. So, um, you know, with the salon, we've won uh, the West Best and the West Ender and, um, you know, other awards. We're still trying to get the Georgia straight. So when that comes out, if you vote for us, we'll be really happy. <laughs> <laughs> just a little competitive. <laughs> yeah. Well, people need to also come experience you. And so um, at the at the end, we can actually, no, let's do it now. Um, yeah, let's just do it now. So if, uh, if someone wants to come experience your salon in kits, you, I always ask the people on our shows to do a little, a special or a gift or something for our listeners and our viewers. So what is it that you have for, for us today? Yeah. So I have a VIP voucher for anyone listening to this, um, what do you call it? Podcast or series? Yeah. Podcast and, without interview. Yeah. And that gives you a $15 value off of your first service with us. And uh, I also, you know, love to get the right connection with the right stylist. So if anyone wants to, I'll have my email up at the end, uh, shoot me an email and tell me a little bit about yourself. Then I can give you a really great recommendation to make sure that you have the right person to fit your needs. Yeah. Why don't you just um, let us know your email right now? Yeah, it's Kaylee. That's C-A-Y-L-E-E. -E at hype, H-Y-P-E, hairstudio.com. Good job spelling it. And for anybody, <laughs> if you have a, a, a unique name that could be spelled wrong or even just a word, please spell out your business name or your website or your email address. Thank you for modeling that really well for us. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have some of the ladies have made a few comments about what the hardest thing is for them. And what I'd love to do is ask you some questions about how you've kind of gotten over these things. So the biggest challenge for Wendy is social media and marketing and keeping up with new technology. So how do you stay ahead of the game and on top of your social media? Yeah, great question. So this one has been challenging for us to get our heads wrapped around. And so what we did was we dedicated three months, we did a theme, a marketing theme, and we dedicated three months of that being our major focus. And we actually were enjoying it so much that we extended it. So we focused six months of our business on marketing. And what that meant was we got content from our staff. So one of the biggest issues is collecting mm -hmm. nice content to keep your page um, looking great all the time. Um, so we ran contests to, you know, if they got 10 photos into us, um, they got certain prizes. We had um, contests for them getting blog posts into us. And so we spent a lot of time just collecting content. Um, and then we, we tried hiring different companies. Um, it's, sometimes hard for them to get a finger on the pulse of your business. Um, but I do believe in hiring things out that aren't your skill set. So what we did was we took somebody in house and there's actually a government grant. Um, so this is a, a little hot tip. So write this down. Um, if you contact granted.ca, um, they can help you get a government grant that can put your team through marketing training. Um, and the company, the local company that does it is Jelly Marketing. And so it's a $7,500 program. The government gives you five grand back and you can train your in-house people. And then they have a little bit better pulse on your brand and what's going on. And you can really take control of that. Brilliant. I love that idea of sourcing your content from your employees. Mm -hmm. so I have a question for everyone listening. Would that be something that with Dynamic Women you guys would like? Would you like a contest to grab content for our social media handles? 
So you guys can comment in there. And if you're listening later, please message me if you're interested in that, because we love to bring in new ideas, especially from amazing femtours like, like you, Kaylee. Um, that is a really, a really good tip. Um, now, what were some of the prizes that you gave in these challenge challenges or contests? Sometimes we'll do it as a team challenge. And then if everybody does it, we'll do a hot lunch and we use ML's catering and it doesn't cost that much. You know, it's like $15 a person and it creates a party and it's really fun. Um, we do uh, give out bonuses. So we reserve our bonus for whatever challenge we have going on that time. Uh, so they do, we'll say a half a percent uh, of their sales will go to, you know, one challenge and another half will go to another challenge. And then we can uh, kind of reward them individually on their efforts that way. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, I love when I get to grab super tips like that. So uh, Brenda was talking about her biggest challenge is not being distracted by all the wonderful courses and conferences and networking yeah. meetings. She finds that she has to be selective and say no and trust that I'm not missing out. And so Kaylee, how do you decide that? Because you have 11 employees. So you have, I'm guessing, just being kids, it's a very sought after location rent wise. And so you've got a lot that you're managing. So how do you, and you're already successful. So how do you manage what you're going to learn and where you're going to go? Yeah, great question, Brenda. And I have to say, I totally resonate with you because I'm an education junkie. I'm, mm. you know, uh, I don't often scroll through social media, but when I do, um, you know, I often follow these rabbit trails to courses offered. And uh, one day, a parent, positive parenting popped up in my feed and it said, are you tired of nagging and yelling? And I'm like, yes, click and bought right into the program, <laughs> which has been really helpful. So um, I would say the way I kind of put the defenses up is mm -hmm. it has to be relevant to what I'm doing and what I'm passionate about. And I actually no longer attend the hair classes at my salon. Um, I'll pop in to, you know, show my support to the team. Um, but I don't have the capacity to sit through those kind of technical classes anymore because I am really looking at business. Um, my next move is to create more of a online platform where salon owners can come to get educated. So I've been buying into a lot of these online programs that teach you how to build your membership site and build your site up. So I, I do uh, buy into a lot of the programs. So, um, I what I do to make sure that it, it's valuable is I carve out a study block in my week every single week and I, I spend that time just on studying and then I make sure that the course is is relevant mm -hmm. and also with the networking it's um, you know I'm attending networking where I feel like I'm going to meet, meet women who can raise the bar um, and uh, and you know get me around a, a new set of people um, so did, did that answer your question I think it did. Totally. Good. Yes. What I'm, what I'm hearing, if I can boil it down is that it's, you needed to be very clear on what your goals are. Yes. So that you know, which courses you need to take, but also being open to a course when it comes, when it's going to serve a need and that need of the, the positive parenting being really at the core of your values yeah. And then making sure there's time to do it and to stay focused. Otherwise, it just becomes another course you bought and did nothing with. Exactly. Yeah. And being very mindful of your time in alignment with, again, your goals and where you're going rather than a, that'd be nice to go to. It's I'm going because there's some people I need to meet or there's magazines there that I need to get in contact with. So you always have an intention or a purpose. Yeah. And I think also what helps me too, if you have kids is I often think I'm taking this time away from my kids. And so it needs to be really valuable. And that is kind of the measuring stick that I use. And I think that's what helped me also remove myself from the operations of my business because I'd be meeting with sales reps thinking, I could be playing with my kids right now <laughs> and I could have somebody else meeting with you because I don't really need to spend an hour looking through the new magazine. You know, I trust my staff to pick the products they want to use. 
So yeah, really the clarity piece is definitely huge. Yeah. And Brenda says that, yes, that she likes the idea of networking that raises the bar. And Wendy says, yeah, me too. Some networking isn't very productive and takes a lot of travel time. Yeah. So everything you should be doing in your business with your time, especially when you go to networking, should bring business back to you somehow, whether it be clients in the moment or you're getting images from when you're there or strategic connections. So it always somehow should bring business back. Uh, and another way is to think, could I earn my hourly rate by being there? Um, because really you're giving up that hourly rate if you're, if you're somewhere. Yeah, well, and, what, and one more point on that is uh, sometimes it's a give back too. So I like to spend a certain amount of my activity as a give back. And so sometimes I go, do go to events where there's women that I think I could help and have met some amazing people that way. Uh, I met a girl, Taylor from Beautiful, young, young girl who's, uh, do you know her? Uh, I went to the uh, high tea where they were the, yes. were the organization. Yeah. Yeah. And she, for her age, is doing such amazing things for raising self-esteem for young girls. Um, I met her and I said, you know, I want to do a cut-a-thon for you. Uh, we organized a cut-a-thon. We had an event and we raised money for her. Um, so sometimes, you know, I'm going out to these events also as, as more of a give back. Yes. Yes. Understandable, of course. Um, yeah, she's amazing. And it's confidence courses for girls in elementary schools, is it? Yeah. Schools? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. She does amazing work. And I got to hear from a couple of the participants that were in it and how it's changed their lives. And so I'm glad to hear that you are, are giving back to that one. That's a very great organization. Very yeah, well, very much needed, much yes. needed. Contact um, Kaylee if you wanna go to Hype Hair Studio, uh, Kaylee at hypehairstudio.com. Um, go on their website, which is I'm guessing. Yeah, Hype Hair Studio, yeah. Um, and then that will, you guys can book your session and just a reminder, um, can you tell everyone what the VIP offer is that you're giving everyone that is, um, tuning in? Yeah. So it's a $15 off your first visit. Um, so if you just want to test the waters and try a stylist, you can get, come in just for a blowout and that'll take $15 off the price of that. Or you can go for the whole, you know, cut color and, and take the $15 off of that. And mm -hmm. I also offered, you know, if you could shoot me an email and tell me, uh, do you like a quiet stylist, a chatty stylist? Do you like, you know, a curly hair specialist? a short hair specialist, um, then I can give you a name of the, the stylist that you might connect with the best. Good tip. Good tip. Not just who's good, but who is these things. So I'll leave on that. Thank you so much, Kaylee. Thank um, you so much for organizing this. This is such a great initiative to empower women. And that's what I love to do. So thank you for the opportunity. And thank you to all the listeners. Yeah. Well, a big mwah, mwah to you, Kaylee. Yeah. Have a fantastic day. And to everyone who is watching us, um, have a great day as well. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Dynamic Women, for joining us today. Please hop on over to iTunes to subscribe and leave us a review. Who do you know who needs to hear our message? We'd love it if you'd share our channel with your friends and family. If you're ready to be more dynamic, have more balance and more success, head over to www.dynamicwomenclub.com forward slash free gift for your key to success book. Stay dynamic.